Do you love improv? Because I do. I'm Trent Dozier, host of I Love Improv with Trent Dozier. Join me live on twitch.tv slash the Trident Network every second and fourth Wednesday, where I'm joined by a new guest each episode to talk about and do some improv. Can't catch it live? No worries. Each episode gets turned into a podcast for your listening pleasure. Podcast episodes are released the Wednesday following the live show. So watch live or listen later. But either way, if you love improv, make sure to check out I Love Improv with Trent Dozier, a part of the Trident Network. Twas the day before Christmas and all through the pad. Everyone was at home, even workaholic old dad. And mom was in the kitchen, cooking still like a rookie, scorching the backs of the gingerbread cookies. And then there's my sister, a parent's delight, annoying, bad-tempered, and obnoxiously bright. And precious little Peter, the family loves the most. If he comes into my room one more time, he'll be toast. Then there's me, handsome and true. The best at everything that anyone can do. Intelligent, witty, there is no doubt. Kind, compassionate. Peter, get out! Yay! Yay! Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D-Commentaries. Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our listeners. Today, we're talking about Twas the Night. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. We sure are. We really are talking about it today. And even the fact that this movie is a Christmas movie could not save it for Al. Y'all, I don't know if we really have discussed how much I love the season of Christmas. That is November 1 through January 15. (laughs) This movie makes me never want to celebrate the Christmas season ever again. Oh, my God. (laughs) I just want to see Val's I almost just, I almost just just choked. She was like, don't say that about yourself. I was taking a drink at the exact moment that Al's faith in Christmas was <laughs> faded questioned. from existence. It was questioned. Um, wow. Wow. I don't, I've never seen this movie. I had never seen this movie either. Mm-mm. And there's a good reason why I had never seen this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Also, not even... Uh, you'll announce it in a second not even famed brian cranston could save this movie not even the great brian cranston who i do think is great (laughs) could save this movie (sighs) okay all right val let's do it uh twas the night came out december 7th 2001 so it was the last movie to come out in the year 2001 um obviously a holiday movie it was directed by nick castle who doesn't have a, like a very robust resume, but he wrote the movie Hook. He, <gasps> he wrote the movie August Rush <gasps> and he directed the movie Major Pain. Wow. Yeah. But like those are like the only things he's done. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's very weird. Would you rather have nothing or three total movies? I would definitely rather have three total movies for sure. Same. I just always get confused by people with resumes like that because I'm like, what do they do for money? Like, you know what I mean? Royalties, baby. I guess. Yeah. I mean, if they have Rufio. (laughs) Seriously. That Rufio money. (laughs) If they have like 16 credits to their name in their entire lives, like, is that enough? Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not in the industry enough to know. Yet. Ah, Um, there's that. (laughs) Optimism. (laughs) Um, Okay. Uh, Twas the Night was written by three different people. Jim Lincoln, who wrote some episodes for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show, and Weird Science, the TV show. Dan Studney, who also wrote Genius, and then Mm. otherwise had the same resume as Jim Lincoln, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids show, and Weird Science show. And then What's Weird Science? So Weird Science was a movie, I think, in the 80s. And then Mm. I guess they made a television show about it. I was not alive. You were not. 
Um, it was like, you know, kind of in the John Hughes era, but like, I don't think it was a John Hughes movie. Maybe it was. I don't remember. OK. And then Jenny Tripp was the other the third writer, and she hasn't really done anything else. So this was like wow. one of her only movies. <laughs> She's like, I peaked. I peaked with Twas the Night. Mm-hmm. OK. The cast is as follows. Josh Zuckerman played Danny Wrigley. And he's been in a few, you know, he's been working like this whole time, um, Mm -hmm. but mostly like one off stuff. But he had a recurring role in Kyle XY and in Desperate Housewives. Mm -hmm. Um, He was also young evil in the Austin Powers. I think that's where I best knew him from. Yeah, for sure. He definitely looked familiar from that. Brenda Great played his sister, Caitlin Wrigley. Um, And she didn't do a whole lot. And she stopped acting entirely in 2010, which honestly, like, I thought she was a decent actor. Like, yeah, she was the one, the like (laughs) least actory out of all of them. Right, right. And then Brian Cranston plays Uncle Nick. If you don't know Brian Cranston, he was the dad in Malcolm in the Middle. And then he was the bad in Breaking Bad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, he's been in some other stuff. He was in the Oscar nominated Trumbo. Um, and he's been in a number. Of I forgot movies. that was a movie. I know I did too, until I looked at his IMDb. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he's been very successful in his career. Although honestly, his IMDb reads very much like a character actor. Like mm-hmm. he really has not been like, he's way more famous than most of the people who are in these movies, but like His career really hasn't been that meaningfully different than a lot of the other people. And then, excuse me, Jefferson Mappin played Santa Claus. Um, And he's a pretty right down the middle character actor. He's been in like one of everything, but nothing specifically of note. Riss Williams played Peter Wrigley, and this was his only credit. And thank God for it. (laughs) Because let me tell you. He is the worst part about this movie. Oh, I don't know if I totally agree, but I get what you're saying. I hate children. <laughs> Continue, Val. Um, Barclay Hope played John Wrigley, the dad. Um, and he's been in some stuff. He was in The Killing, um, Unreal, and Riverdale. Oh, I watched a few episodes of Unreal. Yeah, me too. Um, Tori Higginson played their mom, Abby. Uh, and she's mostly a like sci-fi person like she had a recurring role on stargate atlantis in another show called dark matter oh yeah the other three characters that are like in the cast are the like goons um jeff geddes played bill sandy robinson played harry and he he's been on virgin river i guess mm. and then jung yul kim played elliot the big goon nice uh, but they haven't been in much of anything here's the synopsis A 14-year-old boy and his uncle jeopardize Christmas when they take Santa's sleigh for a joyride. Yep. Yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. So that's Spoiler City. (laughs) Uh (laughs) No, no, no. Uh, Al, what were your first impressions of this movie? Well, Val, the, the exciting thing about this movie for me was that it was the first thing that I watched on my newly working internet in my new home <laughs> on my newly mounted TV. And then you immediately threw your TV out of your window. And now I don't have a television. <laughs> uh, I really wanted it to be Bo Burnham's inside, and then it ended up being. <laughs> so if anyone wants to know how I'm doing, it's that I'm really yearning to watch Bo Burnham's inside. And so maybe you send me a text. Um <laughs> Um, yeah, this movie was not good. It was not a good movie. There was no redeeming qualities. There's a, there's a few stupid parts that made it funny and like such a, oh my God way. Um, I'm going to give this movie a three. Is that your lowest? No, I don't even want to give it a three. I'm giving it a two. I think I like this less than You Lucky Dog. Really? Yes. I just hate talking to animals. Right. But I would watch You Lucky Dog again before I watched this again. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to change it to a two. And the only reason it's a two is it's one point for being a Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> What's wow, the other that's point my, for? That's my first two. Um, Brian Cranston. 
Okay, fair. Who's not good in this movie no, either. No, he's but terrible. He's a good guy. So. Yes, he is. Sending you peace and love, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Sending you peace and love, Val. Val, what are your first impressions? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my first impression was this kid is the lead of this movie. He can't act. <laughs> He's doing pretty good now. He clearly has gotten better, but like, you know, a lot of acting is reacting. Like mm, mm-hmm. there was none of that. There literally every single time they showed his face when he's not talking, it's literally this blank stare. <laughs> yep. Literally yep. every time. And you have the same hair color as him. So you <laughs> kind of like you do the role better than yeah. he does. And like it doesn't matter if someone's telling him horrible news, if someone's saying something funny. It do- literally doesn't matter. It's the same reaction. So that was distracting to me Mm -hmm. and annoying yeah i lost interest very early in this movie yeah also i just like if you're gonna have the the lead character be kind of an anti-hero there has to be something redeemable about him he has to be funny or he has to like figure out at some point and feel bad (laughs) like about being a piece of crap and like he what we ultimately find out is that he's not actually an anti-hero. He's not actually a bad person, but like the, it doesn't feel like an arc. It just feels like Mm -hmm. the way they portrayed him at the beginning of the movie was inaccurate rather than like, you know what I mean? Like, like we're supposed to think, Oh, he's trying to be this way because he's trying to emulate his uncle who he looks up to or whatever. But like, it's that's not really conveyed very effectively at the beginning of the movie, as far as I'm concerned, like he sort of cons his brother, but like, I don't know. That's just what siblings do to each other. Like that's not necessarily like they make it into this like hugely bad thing. And I'm kind of like, okay, I mean, I feel like every big brother has done that to their sibling. Yeah. (laughs) This is not what you're making it out to be. I don't know. I just didn't care about him. I didn't care what happened to him. I didn't care if he learned a lesson throughout this movie. I just literally didn't care. And like halfway through the movie, he goes from being the bad guy to being like the voice of reason. And it's like, right. What? So that was weird. And then like at first, when we're first introduced to Brian Cranston, I was like, okay, this could be kind of fun. Like him playing like kind of a grungy con He's an air piercing. Like he looks like he could be a, an ensemble member in Rent. Like that's what, what he looked like to me. Yeah. Like Brian Cranston is funny and he's a physical actor and he is good at acting. But like this movie gave him nothing except mm-hmm. one note the entire movie. Yeah. So I was kind of whatever. And then we get introduced to these goons that are like mad at him for stealing their money. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, they make no sense. Their behavior makes no sense. Their appearance makes no sense. They look like yeah. they're like the nerds from the college next door. Like, they look like they created Facebook. Yeah. Like, it is bizarre. Like, it is truly bizarre. Like, I do not understand this whole setup at all. And basically, the only reason they exist is because he needs some reason to go home. Right. And or to go to his brother's. Um, and so anyway, he does. And from then on, it's basically a ripoff of the Santa Claus. If the Santa Claus was all about stealing. Yeah. (laughs) Like literally that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's not interesting to me, especially because this was five years after the Santa Claus came out. So it's not even like they could be like, Oh, we wrote this at the same time. It's like ants in a bug's life. No, it's not. (laughs) No, it is not. It is just a straight up bad ripoff. Yeah. So, yeah, that is my first impressions. I didn't like anyone in this movie. I didn't think the script did them any favors. I just it was completely uninteresting to me. I did not want to watch it. Yeah, I don't have any other comments. (laughs) (laughs) Al, Mm -hmm. did you have any favorite quotes or moments from this movie? Let's see. Once again, I cannot handle people decorating their tree on the 24th of Christmas. That's just not just like, like you decorate on November 1st or don't put it up at all. (laughs) The music in this movie, awful. I 
tried to like write down the music, but I like couldn't because how do you write down like it was I don't know <laughs> so bad. Um, my favorite quote is "This isn't Splash Mountain." <laughs> we love a dis reference, <laughs> and I don't know who said I don't know who said this. I should have written it down, but someone said, "You got it, girl." And it was really awkward. It was like Santa to the sister or something mm. or the Uncle Nick. Or Uncle like, Nick I don't know. said was, a couple weird things to her. Yeah, it's weird. He called um, her a runway model when he first got there. Yeah, gross. Um, I wrote at the it's the end of the movie and I finally learned that the girl's name is Caitlin. <laughs> so I didn't know her name the entire time. Oh, and then Santa says, my favorite naughty boy. Ugh. Val, did you have any favorite quotes and moments? Um, I had a couple things. At one point, they're talking about Uncle Nick before he gets there. And Danny goes, he's not a con artist. He's an entrepreneur. And then the dad goes, OK, he's a con artist with a laptop, <laughs> which I thought was funny because I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. I'm just a con artist with a laptop. Yep. Apparently the smartest man and the smartest laptop in the entire world, too. Yeah. What? OK. There's so many things in this movie, by the way, that are like either technologically related or like magic related that literally make no sense, like yep. none whatsoever. So that's fun, too. Um, at one point, the goons say, let me slap him. Let me show him some mama's kitchen discipline, which I was yep. like, what? <laughs> and he was like wrestling back. He's like. Let me give him some of that mama's kitchen discipline. Let me remind you again that this is, looks like a 21-year-old accountant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who he looks like? If you're a fan of SNL, he looks like the new SNL cast member who does all of the Trump impressions. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I have... His name is like James. Sure. He looks exactly like him. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I wondered if this was set in Chicago because they mentioned the Gold Coast and the family is called the Wrigley's. I did have that thought. Um, I don't know if we'll ever know because mm -hmm. they don't explicitly say it anywhere. But the only I thing is wonder. all the houses they were going to. I mean, don't look anything like Chicago houses. No, but they did say like the rich people in Gold Coast. And I was like, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Richies. Oh, here's another weird ass quote okay you're some tough tickler man yeah no 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 no, no. oh there's a, oh my god there's I just a, have so many comments there's a whole situation where santa's secret weapon is that he can tickle you into submission and i'm talking about a grown man tickling another grown man it is the weirdest most uncomfortable thing you know what's very interesting about if you go to improvisers and you're doing an improv scene and you say, do the worst improv you can possibly do. I want you to do so bad. It turns out and it's funny. Yep. Every time. When you try way too hard to be funny, that's when it doesn't work out. And that's when it's not funny. Mm -hmm. So if they had like really dove into this, Go and do this awful. It would have been so much better. But right. the fact that they tried so hard to make this good is why it's unbearable to watch. Yeah. It's also like trying to make it good in like eight different ways. Like it didn't yeah. know what movie it was. Like there, mm -hmm. it was so disjointed and weird. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Those are basically the only quotes I wrote. There were some okay. really uncomfortable moments in this movie, like for mm -hmm. various different reasons. Like at one point people are like frozen because of Santa's magic and Brian Cranston's character like is like, Ooh, and like pretends like a frozen woman is kissing his cheek. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like what, what? And it was played for laughs. <sighs> so bad yeah so that's the kind of movie this was anyway uh that's it for me in terms of quotes and moments great um why don't we just dive right into spoiler city? let's dive right in let's go mm -hmm. ho 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 we're nude and spocy oh did you hear what i just said 
about Spocy. Spocy. Go check out our merch. We have some Spocy merch. We do. It Spoiler looks Spoiler City. Spocy. <laughs> I'm just so smart when it comes to <laughs> developing new slogans for our podcasts. <laughs> That's true. I don't know who you were being just then, but I like I it. myself. Oh, That's how okay. I talk. Oh, in, okay. In real normal life. Right, so. right. I don't have a mic in front of me. That's how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to uh, Spoiler City, where I'm going to, as positively as I can go through this movie and I want, I'm going to go fast. I Val, I might not even come to you for some clarity on some things today. Don't. I think we're just going to steamroll right mm-hmm. through. It. Mm-hmm. All great. We open up on a narrator and a, and a preface of, of what everything is. You're going to quickly find out. We didn't need any of that because <laughs> the narrator doesn't come back until the very last seconds of the movie. So we really could have just gotten an intro with no narrator, no anything. Um, and then we have the thing, the preface of the like, "Mm, I wonder, you're probably wondering how we got here. (laughs) We're not. Um, we would have gotten there without like you telling us that we need to be excited to see why Santa is tied up. Okay. Stupid. Um, so the only thing that I did like from this beginning was he opens with "Twas the night before Christmas. And then he switches it to our cold open, um, which I wrote. Uh, cute way to jump back into the same iambic pentameter i don't know if that's the right <laughs> thing but i wrote iambic pentameter and i knew it was a thing and i wrote down <laughs> so it's the day before christmas it's christmas eve um and danny our our lead he has no money for gifts he thought it was the 23rd he thought he had an extra day so he sells all of his gifts to his brother and then he gets in trouble from his parents for scamming his brother. So something he always does is scam people. <laughs> um, we start talking about Uncle Nick, and then you're immediately like, oh, Nick, Saint Nick. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, we get it. He's about to be Santa Claus in some kind of facet. <laughs> and then Peter, who is the most annoying decom character I've ever come across. <laughs> this child did not know how to act, and that's why he stopped acting. Okay, so um, (laughs) Peter, the little shit, um, knocks over the family piggy bank that has only coins in it because he wants to share the wealth because he because because they don't have money and they want to be nice to people and they need money. Um, Then we cut to Nick tied up because he stole money from the two goons. He needs thirty thousand dollars by Christmas morning, which is the next morning. Um, and we see a little montage of him trying to escape town. He ends up in a stall with a Santa outfit, which he just rips the shoes off of a guy who's <laughs> and the sitting pants on a toilet and the pants come with it. And he gets away from the goons because he is dressed as Santa. Then as a family, Danny, Peter, Caitlin, mom and dad start reading Twas the Night Before Christmas. Okay, they're really pushing this Twas the Night thing into our brains. And then knock, knock, knock. St. Nick is here. LOL. Because he's dressed up as Santa. And then since he's there, they're like, oh, what are you doing here? And he's like, I wanted to see my family. Okay. (laughs) And then mom and dad have to go to the ER because they're both doctors, which we love. We love. I love a mom who's also a doctor. We love a mom who's also a doctor. But you you know what, everyone? The reindeer flu is going around and they are understaffed. And so they have to go to the hospital. It's not clear right if now. humans and reindeer get the fl- this flu. But it is clear <laughs> in like five minutes. So mom and dad leave the kids with Nick and the sister Caitlin debunks Santa with science. He's not real. We would look like stones if Santa moves that fast. And Danny is his one redeeming quality toward the beginning of the movie is that he's still trying to get his little brother to believe in Santa. And before they leave the kids with Nick, dad yells at Danny and Danny walks away from dad after a snarky remark. So they're in, like, not a good place. I don't know. Their relationship is really weird. So the parents leave. Nick is on a computer to tr- on his computer. And the goons somehow have a pop up and they're like, ha ha, we're in your computer. We're tracking you. But it's like live. This is it's pre like- Wi-Fi. This is pre like Skype. This like. I don't understand. I, mean, I might not have been pre Skype actually, but like it's very like early days if if it existed yet. Yeah. Like this whole 
concept of how they use computers in this movie makes no sense. Yeah. And so Nick created a virus. So he drags like the little shortcut you have on your screen. He drags the virus onto the video and their video starts to glitch. And they're like, oh, what's what's happening? And then he like closes his laptop and he's like, uh, he invented the secret virus for situations like this. And then closes the laptop and he goes, that'll take care of them and every computer within 50 miles. So then they go out there like going to bed and then they hear Santa on the roof and Santa somehow like pauses time. Um, very click by Adam Sandler. <laughs> and then he like pixelates and bubbles down the chimney and into the living room. And Santa goes over to the computer and moves the virus into the trash can because he He's has a computer on his sleigh. Yeah. So he has a computer on his sleigh because the reindeer have the reindeer flu. <laughs> so he's using technology for the first time. And he was within 50 miles of the virus hitting. And so he was grounded. And so his elves led him to the reason behind the grounding. And so he deletes the virus. I'm not making Which this Which all it takes is to drag the virus into the trash can. The trash can. So if you're ever having computer trouble, try that. Yeah. So at this point in the movie, Santa has frozen Danny and Nick. And this happens throughout the rest of the movie. They do not use CGI in this movie. They just have the actor stand really still. But if you look close enough, you can see them moving. Yes. It doesn't even take CGI. Just literally use the same frame. Like, all you have to do is just have the same frame go across multiple frames. That's all you have to do to make someone look like they're frozen. It was awful. Y'all, I, I don't even have words for how bad it was. Uh, then we we find out Danny is on the naughty list because he's a scammer. Well, we find out that out later. Who cares? Um, <laughs> then Santa has teeny tiny presents that he puts in, down under the tree. And apparently they're, the three of them are only getting an individual present this year because he only put three presents under the tree. <laughs> but he has this little tech orb, which is what I called it. I don't know if there was a word for it, but I called it the tech orb. It's an ornament. And he presses on a it. button on it and the teeny tiny presents like blow up to normal size. So that is how Santa delivers his presents. He has them very small. And so it's easy for him to carry millions of these. It's also how he freezes people <laughs> and how he like pixelates himself. Yes. So mindful. there's three buttons on there. Freeze, enlarge, or D large and pixelate to slay and unpixelate to slay. <laughs> so um, he when he's blowing up the big presents, he drops his his tech orb and the button hits. And so they unfreeze and then they see Santa and they scream and Santa tries to like run away and he gets knocked unconscious. So they're figuring out that they can use the tech ball because they see it and they're like, oh, beep, 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 beep. And so they basically, honey, I shrunk Uncle Nick. And he's really small. And then he tech balls him and Annie, Danny freezes. And then Nick turns into the pixels to go up to the sleigh. He figures, figures out the sleigh and then he goes back to the house. And then Nick is a, also a scammer. So he goes, we're going to selflessly finish Santa's mission. So they leave on the sleigh and they're like, Peter and Kalen, <laughs> Peter and what's her name will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but then Peter comes downstairs and realizes Santa's in the living room and it's not Uncle Nick. So then we see Nick like giving gifts to Santa. But what he's really doing to try to make his money back is he's going into people's houses, delivering their gifts, but also taking all of their really expensive items and making them small and putting them into his jacket so that he can steal them and sell them later for money. A smart idea, honestly. Yep. And then so... Peter and Caitlin trap Santa to try to figure out what happens. And so that's where we cut to from the beginning of the movie. So literally, it's only been like 25 minutes and we see what we saw in the beginning. So we really did not need that intro. Right. And also, it was a complete head fake because him being tied up lasts for like 10 seconds and is not an important part of the story nope. at all. Yep. Yep. So Nick is actually like lifetime naughty list. He's terrible. 
And so Caitlin is like a smarty pants. It's referenced throughout the entire movie. I didn't find it important, but she comes up with a plan to stop them by using a different computer to log into their computer to stop the computer. Blah, 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 blah. Which like none of it makes any sense. She's going to a computer at a store, which is not con- mm-hmm. connected to any Internet or has any files on it or anything. And she's somehow yep. going to hack into a And she's computer. also in like fifth grade. That part isn't even on the list of the least believable parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> she at one point know. she literally All I goes was playing in fifth grade with sims yeah but there are kids who are really good at that kind of stuff and so that's fine but like kids she, come fix my computer at one point this girl who's supposed to know everything there is to know about computers literally goes does your sleigh have a web address like what what is that doesn't even make sense like i know you're they're not going to go into a whole thing of like what's the ip address of your yeah slay, but no, like, like a web address makes no literally no sense so just yeah. don't do that like just don't, don't do say it. anything just hack into it okay sure you yep. can hack into it whatever stupid anyway sorry keep going so no you're fine so they have to find a computer to to go find where they are so santa tries to drive a car for the first time <laughs> And then uh, Danny, we go to Danny's like not bully, but like bully from school. They ended up at his house because he's rich because they went to the Golden Coast rich part. And he starts to have this like kind of turnaround of heart and is like, oh, I think have a better idea of like a better gift to give him. And they go into the house and then uh, Nick goes into a monologue about being naughty and how he's on the naughty list forever because he got, wanted a guitar that he never got. He wanted like an electric guitar. And he's like, you know, Danny, if I had gotten that guitar when I was 14, my life would have panned out a lot differently. <laughs> OK, boomer. Yeah. And if I had won the lottery two years ago, my life would have panned out a lot differently. Um, and so then Santa somehow drove himself to an alley where there's a bunch of goons and they're graffitiing the alley and they're threatening Santa and these two tiny children. They shake the car <sighs> and Santa gets out and Santa like starts to fight him and that's where he gets tickled and the guy just like, OK, and, you know, tickling is also he likes him. Yeah, it's and then he invites Santa to be part of their crew. Y'all. <laughs> I, I I like I just, this is just it's so bad. There's also so many insensitive stereotypes in this part. I was yep. just like, what is mm-hmm. happening? This was so unnecessary. Like, just yeah. cut this part out. Who cares? So they yeah, get they to didn't need this. The they store. could have just drove, driven straight to the the tech store. Yeah. So they end up at the tech store, the computer store, and the manager thinks that Santa's an employee literally cut straight from Elf. Like, literally, this whole scene was like, get back to work because um, you're an Elf or you're Santa and you need to be working. It's so weird. Um, so then we slowly, we go back to Danny. He's slowly turning nice and he wants to go to a homeless shelter to, like, bring them food and bring them presents. And um, Nick is like, no, 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 we should, like, go to the big mansion. And he's like, don't they already have stuff? And he goes... Oh, well, we could take the food from the big mansion to the homeless shelter. And Danny was like, okay, that sounds good. Um, Then Peter uh, has to create a diversion in the computer store while they hook up to the computer. It works and they're taking over the sleigh. And um, for some, I don't know how I wasn't paying attention. She loses them. So they were close. They had it. They turned it off and controlling the sleigh and then they, they lost them. So they end up at the big mansion, and then I wrote, how does time work in this movie? <laughs> um, because, like, does everyone freeze, or does everyone else's timeline continue? So, like, if I were to uh, freeze that, or, like, would your timeline freeze, or would you keep going, and then I don't realize that I lost time? Like, I th- does my time go back? But if I'm frozen for, like, five minutes, do I then skip five minutes? You know? I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think yeah. it's just, like, the proximity, but who knows? They don't mm-hmm. explain it. Yeah. So Danny enlarges. um, So he stole a turkey, not stole, but stole a turkey from the mansion to bring to the homeless shelter uh, by making it small with the tech orb and then like accidentally makes it big. But it got gets caught in the way of Uncle Nick, who has hundreds 
thousands of small items in his jacket. And so all of those things. It wasn't an accident. He suspected Nick and he oh, just did he? P- like beeped it right oh. at him. Yeah. Cool. No idea. Wasn't <laughs> um, and so then after that happens, he's like on top of a car and candlesticks and just like piles of jewelry. And Danny like hit his breaking point. He's done with Nick. He's heading back to help Santa. So this is Nick's turning point or uh, Danny's turning point. And then Nick steals the tech orb. He's like, okay, yeah, you're right. So they go back. Danny comes back home and sister inspects the sleigh to get it to work to get work again. Cause they like crashed it outside of the home. Santa and Danny, um, their celebrity name is Sanny, um, have a heart to heart. And he's like, you don't always have to be a scammer. My favorite naughty boy. Um, <laughs> Nick has like a come to Jesus moment too. And the goons come like Nick is alone and has his come to Jesus moment. He kind of like dropped him off and ran. The goons come, but Nick isn't there. And then Nick comes and shows up and he stands up to the goons and he's going to fight the big one. But then he shrinks him with the tech orb. And so it's really it's so funny. I mean, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen on TV. And then they use the laptop to the like Nick's really expensive, fancy laptop to get the sleigh back in business. And then uh, they say that there's not a clear cut line between naughty and nice. And you can move from one to the, it's like a flexible thing, which cool. I think that's how that works anyway. And then mom and dad come home. Dad covers Nick with a coat. Dude, it's your own house. Get a blanket. (laughs) Um, And then in terms of time, how does time work in this movie? Mom and dad were gone for like three hours. I feel like when you get paged in, you're not there for just like three hours. You're there for a real long time. Mm -hmm. And then um, we wake up in the morning and there's time for presents. I wrote Nick is happy. Because he's with his family. And then Nick, haha, when you guess it, gets the guitar he always wanted because predictable. And then we end with a narrator. And the worst part of this movie, it's called Twas the Night. And it was right there. It did not end with, and to all a good night. Done. <laughs> that was great. Thanks. Unlike this movie. <sighs> Yeah. Like there are so many like the message of this movie is is an interesting one, right? Like it isn't black and white. You know, people aren't yeah. just all bad or all good, right? Like mm-hmm. and also like the the concept at one point the thing when Danny encounters his bully is his bully is supposed to get like a bad gift, right? Because he's naughty. Mm-hmm. He's not supposed to get what he wants. Danny suggests because this guy is violent that he get a punching bag so that he can work out his like aggression on something like that isn't a person. That is a cool idea like that. That in and of itself is a really cool idea. And it is such a bummer that that cool idea is wrapped in so many layers of absolute garbage because that is a cool thought. That is something that movies like the Santa Claus don't really get into like right. that is something new about the concept of Christmas and Santa Claus that hasn't really been addressed in a movie that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Great. Oh, you know, that's somewhere in Hallmark <laughs> somewhere. Sure. But like, you know, that's, it's a perfect like kids right. movie premise, right? Mm-hmm. This was, they did not, they so, not even didn't stick the landing. They like landed in another, in another state. Like, yeah, I, I just, what a bummer. Indiana. Yeah. (laughs) What a bummer. Okay. That's all I had to say. All right. Well, you know what's fun, Val? Us and playing bingo. So let's head on over. (laughs) Let's do it. All right. I want to start. Yay. Yeah. One hit wonder song. No. No. (laughs) Breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera. I can't remember. Did we say narration is breaking the fourth wall? No. Okay. No. So I don't think so. Great. Holiday theme. The yo. You bet your sweet Christmas butt is. <laughs> the one good thing about this movie is it gets this box. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to mark any other boxes. <laughs> Just this one. Just this one box. <laughs> Clunky metaphor. Well, we kind of just talked about it. We talked about it. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, Val? We don't need to talk about it again. No, we don't. If you missed it, 
rewind. Just click that 15 seconds back like yep. 15 times. <laughs> Parents who just don't get it. So I don't think so. Because okay. Danny, like... Danny's just a shit. Yeah. Like, he doesn't deserve them to get what he's doing. Yeah. Cool non-parent adult. Yeah. Nick. Santa? Nick wasn't cool at the beginning. He does get cool. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of, like, cool in the sense of, like, cool Uncle Nick, you know? Like, they, <laughs> like, love him because he's yeah. their, like, weirdo cool uncle. Uncle Nick. Someone too famous for a TV movie. So Malcolm in the Middle had been on the air for a year and a half. But I don't know how famous Brian Cranston was at this point. The only thing is he had been like a pretty established character actor by that point. Like he had a solid resume before 2001. Yeah. And okay. we typically do give it to people but not this one though we give it to like people who became famous like yeah this one we've mostly given it to people like um debbie reynolds or like um what's his face from fresh prince who was in you lucky dog like people who it's just like why did this person do this yeah. but like at All this right. at this point in his career i could see why he did this movie you know what i mean mm -hmm. okay we'll skip it okay competition to resolve central problem no no a montage sequence, yes. Yeah, there's like two or three. Yeah, like the the, the one that I remembered is like when they're tying up Santa, like yeah. they like pull down the lights and they like do spin mm -hmm. the tree and all that stuff. Yeah, cliche villains, <laughs> I guess. Goons, tech tech people. I don't. Yeah, clothes or items you owned. Yes. Ah, <gasps> tell me, Val. So I had and actually still have at the beginning of the movie when he realizes it's Christmas Eve and he hasn't gotten anyone presents yet. He opens his wallet and he has like one of those nylon Velcro wallets. And I had one of those and I still have it. You still have it? Yeah. I mean, I don't use it, but like I have it. I own it still. <laughs> you use that wallet? <laughs> I actually thought about it because it's like thin. So I was like, mm -hmm. actually, I might use this. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Lincoln Park Zoo, actually. <gasps> so cute. I used mm -hmm. to have a, a Spider-Man one. Nice. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes 40 to 60. Oh, man. Uh, 22. I wish. 37. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> That's more than one of the other bad ones we watched recently that wasn't nearly as bad. Yeah. Yikes. Okay. Happily ever after. Yeah. Yeah. Almost kissing? No. Did mom and dad kiss? Uh, I don't think so. They like side hugged. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Someone who became famous. Yes. There it Brian is. Brian Cranston. There it is. Also, the lead um, is in a TV show, Danny, um, the one you didn't like. Danny is on a TV show. Um, that's on Paramount Plus only that's like airing right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's called The Offer. I looked him up on Instagram and followed him. Nice. Because I'm following all I can't people. wait for him to hear how much we hated his performance. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry we hated you when you were 13. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked you in Austin Powers. Yeah. Betraying of one's real friends or values. Yes. Kind of the opposite. Like he kind of like turns around. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, you're right. And actually, the whole reason that they even do the outing is because he wants to try and save Christmas. So even right. by that point, he was already kind of doing the right thing or trying. Yeah. Your childhood crush. Nope. He if I had seen this movie, he would have been. But I can't <laughs> say that. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw this. No, I never saw this. Yeah. Obviously, bad special effects or stunts. So Almost many. the whole movie. Yep. DCOM stars, Eric Von Detten, Kirsten Storms, Ryan Merriman, Kimberly J. Brown, or any Lawrence brother. Nope. Nope. Musical number? No. No. <laughs> this is the this is the most sad bingo <laughs> we've ever had. 
We're just trying to get through it, guys. We are chugging right along. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, why are we sad about it? <laughs> real magic and science magic. Technology yeah. magic. Yeah. Science is the real magic. So Fire much magic. Spose. Fire merch. Spose. <laughs> Someone says the title of the movie. Yes. Yes. A couple they times. do do that. Ha, I said do do. <laughs> Speaking of do, Scooby Dude. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're so over it. Uh, the heroes create the problem. Uh, um, is Nick considered a hero? Um, yes, kind of. But also, he does like, create the problem by the, the stealing oh, the money, true. which leads yeah. to the, the virus, virus, which leads yeah. to the Santa. So yeah. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead is a fish out of water. No. Okay. <laughs> Unless you disagree. No, I don't know how to make it work. <laughs> but what I said no, and then for some reason, like this is how my brain works. I just thought of like, I really want mozzarella sticks right now. <laughs> I understand. Like that was that was like the first thing that who doesn't want like, mozzarella sticks at oh any my point. God. For anyone who watches 30 Rock, when she's like, that guy at the bar wants to buy you a drink, and she goes, I don't want a drink. Will he buy me mozzarella sticks? <laughs> She is all of us. <laughs> oh, um, well, Val, after a good streak of bingos, we have lost our streak today. We have no bingo. That feels right. Feels right. Well, we almost had, we could have had it with a competition or a childhood crush or a fish out of water. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless. Nevertheless, we persist. Nevertheless. Um, okay. Welcome to... The game of which tune? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's going to be a game you've heard of before. Val, I'm going to play you a song. You have to tell me what song it is. And Val, for which tune? We're going Christmas music, baby. <laughs> Great. Okay. I'm terrible at this game, by the way. I can't remember the names of any songs so this will be fun if you can describe it to me i'll take it okay okay ready mm -hmm. you don't have to you can give me the the person who sings it or the title okay okay it's the most wonderful yeah! time of the year <laughs> okay val gets one point <laughs> I'm going to stop it whenever Val starts talking. So if you didn't know it, it's um, it's on you. I'm also going to turn it down because that was really loud. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Rocking around the Christmas tree. And yeah. Have a happy holiday. Okay. Val's two for two. She said she'd be bad at this game. <laughs> Maybe my niche is Christmas music. Boom, 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 boom. Santa baby. Wow. Down the chimney you know what's great about all these songs is they have really good intros <laughs> where I can do. stop it before the words come in. <laughs> oh, Santa. Santa Claus is coming to town. Man. Santa too Claus late. is coming to town. That's okay. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you waiting. Oh, yeah, we did two different parts of the song. You're right. It, it was that part. <laughs> that was a hard one, though. Almost stumped you. Yeah. I couldn't totally make out the tune. Ready? Mm -hmm. Last one. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is you. No. <laughs> want a lot Turn for that off so I can keep it in. I'm gonna stop it at 15. <laughs> there is just one thing I royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, you got all five points of which too. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. And I'm proud of you because Christmas music is my favorite genre of music. So the fact that you know those songs makes me happy. Oh, yeah. I love Christmas music. 
Uh, okay, Val, thanks for thanks for having me today. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me today. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, um, don't judge us on this movie um, or our take <laughs> on it. Please come back and listen next time. Please when we will... don't judge us on this movie. <laughs> uh, next episode, we will be watching Double Teamed. Oh, that's a classic. I've never seen it, so <gasps> I'm excited. Oh, Val, you're going to love it. <laughs> I hope I love it still. There's a few too. funny parts where where it, it did circulate on TikTok, um, one part, but I'm really excited for Double Team. We're also going to have a special guest. Yes, we are. Uh, it's going to be great. So listen next week. And as always, uh, if you enjoyed listening to this episode or any episode, please leave a review. Uh, please leave five stars. Please tell a friend. Um, we are available on all podcasting platforms pretty much. So wherever people listen, they can find us. Bye, Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at the tridentnetwork.com slash dcommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at dcommentaries. Dcommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit the tridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Allie.